Welcome to our webinar on Modbus Serial Port Sharing Devices. Today we're going to be discussing Modbus Serial Port Sharing Devices. This webinar will last about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm Maria Lamoni, Sales Manager here at icv USA and have Robert from our Technical Support Department with me. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box. We'll start with a brief introduction, go over Modbus Serial Port Sharing Devices, discuss how two masters can access one shared device, how to set up the serial port sharing devices, and Modbus RTU ASCII conversion. Then we'll show you the read cache function, go over applications including lighting control and production line automation. Near the end of our training, Robert Morale from our technical support department will show you how to access a controller from a local panel and with the SCADA software which will be two masters accessing one slave device. ICP-DAS is a Taiwan-based manufacturer of industrial control, data acquisition, data communication, and wireless equipment. It was established in 1993, and ICP-DAS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 100 R&D engineers and work with them to add new features to products, develop new products, and to support our customers. We are a Microsoft Embedded Partner, have our ISO 9001 certification, provide lead free equipment, and free technical support. We provide free online trainings every month on technology, equipment, programming, and software. We have many different kinds of protocol converters for network interoperability and communication between devices and computers using different protocols. They're used to convert protocols like HART, Ethernet IP, CAN bus, Profibus, and BACnet to Modbus protocols. They're easy to set up and configure with a software utility or a web page interface. Our new DINRAIL mountable Modbus serial port sharing devices convert baud rates, convert Modbus RTU and ASCII protocols, and allow two masters to share one slave device. They automatically control the direction of the RS-485 bus, are configurable over a web page through their web server, are very small in size, and have low power consumption. They can be powered over Ethernet by a PoE switch or powered by a 12 to 48 VDC. They support operating temperatures between negative 25 Celsius and 75 Celsius or negative 13 Fahrenheit to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. We offer Modbus serial port sharing devices with different RS-232 and RS-485 port configurations. We offer versions with two RS-232 ports, three RS-232 ports, two RS-485 ports, three RS-485 ports, one RS-232 and one RS-485. We also offer a version with one RS-485 and two RS-232 ports. They support up to 254 devices in the RS-485 network, and they have our patented self-tuner that automatically improves the RS-485 signal. The TSH-700 has robust insulated case. It's very similar to our popular TGW-700 series Modbus RTU to Modbus TCP gateways. It has serial ports and system LED indicators. Once the power is on, the system LED indicator will illuminate. There is an init switch at the number 4 position in the diagram, which puts the device either into configuration mode or run mode. Our new TSH-700 serial port sharing devices work with half duplex and full duplex devices. They feature a baud rate conversion function which allows a single master to communicate with slave devices using different baud rates and data formats. Modbus mode can be used to convert Modbus RTU and ASCII protocol. Raw data mode can be used for DCON or other query response protocols. Different baud rates and different formats can be used on different serial ports. In raw data mode, it supports most half duplex query response type communication like DCON that does require that does not require protocol conversion when the data is smaller than the 512 byte buffer which is built in for each serial port they can perform full duplex communication 
Modbus RTU ASCII conversion allows a single Modbus RTU ASCII master device to communicate with Modbus RTU or ASCII slaves using different protocols, baud rates, and data formats. The two masters sharing one slave feature allows two different masters to connect to different serial ports to share slave devices. The built-in cache function reduces the loading of serial communication on the slave port by removing duplicate queries when two master devices are requesting the same information. When two master devices request the same Modbus information, the built-in cache function removes duplicated requests to reduce the load of communication of the serial device, the serial port. The built-in read cache function is used to store requests and responses of Modbus messages in the TSH-700 series memory buffer. When the other master controllers require the same information from the same slave RTU device, the cached response is what is returned immediately. The read cache function dramatically reduces the load on the slave serial port communication, ensuring faster responses to the master, improving the stability of the entire system. Here's an application diagram of TSH-735 with three RS-485 ports. It's connected to two Modbus RTU master devices over RS-485 ports. One of the Modbus RTU master devices is a ViewPack IEC 61131-3 programmable controller with the touchscreen, and the other is a host PC running SCADA software. The HMI controller and the host PC communicate over different Modbus protocols, but they can still access the same Modbus RTU-based RTD input module slave device on the right, thanks to the TSH-735 serial port sharing device. TSH-700 series serial port sharing devices are being used to control lights and building automation systems. The office lighting control application connects the two uplink serial ports on the TSH-735 module to the two control panels with our TPD series touchscreen controllers, which are configured as Modbus masters. There's one in the front of the building, as well as one in the back. They are networked together with the TSH-735 module for controlling the lighting control circuit over the RS-485 bus. Lighting control is done through the touchscreen controllers in the office. The TSH-700 serial sharing devices are also being used in manufacturing production lines. The SCADA Monitoring and Control Center is connected to a serial port on the TSH-734 module and can connect to multiple slave devices that are shared through multiple serial port sharing devices. Multiple controllers are used for automation of production lines and other areas in manufacturing systems. They're connected over RS-232 to the serial port sharing devices. A panel PC on site is set up as a master controller of production line 1 and production line 2. Through serial port sharing devices, I.O. and process information is shared back to the SCADA system in the control center. We provide touchscreen PLCs that can be a Modbus master or Modbus slave. They come in 2.8, 3.5, 4.3, and 7.3 inch versions they're programmable with free HMI Works development software. You can program them in letter logic and C language. We provide Indusoft SCADA control and monitoring software that you can use to generate reports, show status, implement control, send email alarms, and log data if needed. It comes with an hour of free web-based training that can be catered around your application. Now I'm going to be transferring over to Robert in our technical support department to be showing you um, how to... Robert, are you there? How to uh, access a slave from two different Modbus masters using a serial port sharing device with our touchscreen PLCs and Indusoft SCADA software. Okay, thank you, Maria. Can you all hear me okay? Okay, yes. I hope you can. Okay, so let's see. This is a diagram of what I plan to do. So in this diagram, I have one TSH module and two Modbus masters connected by RS-485. They're sharing connections to four different slave devices, each with uh, different register values and different uh, data. 
So there's a slave address 1, a slave address 2, slave address 3, slave address 4. Uh, let's see, each device has its own unique properties and device properties. So what I'll do t first is show you HMI Works, show you how to create a connection as Modbus Master 1, and then I'll show you a quick demo using Indusoft uh, being Modbus Master 2. So they're both, they're both sharing data, or I'm sorry, communicating to the same slave devices and being able to display the data independently. So first I want to open HMI Works. Okay, HMI Works. I'm going to create a new project. I'll create it for our TPD 430 since it's a serial connection. Let's see, the project name will be, I guess, Tank Monitor. And I'll just, for this example, I'll just use standard C, or I'm sorry, standard ladder programming because we're just going to display the values. So within HMI Works, I just want to create some label widgets and display the values on there. And I'll put a nice background picture. Let me just go here and select a nice background image. Where's my background image? OK, is that one we to do? Oh. OK, we'll select this one. And then we'll expand it. So we'll have a nice background image. And we can also create multiple pages. But for this demo, I'll just create a simple connection. So first thing you must do is click here for connection, create a new connection. Uh, for this one, you want to set the stereo port properties to the TSH properties. So let's assume that it's just 9600, which is our default 8 and 1. And then we click OK. Next thing we need to do is add some devices. A new device. Uh, let's see, let's just assume they're third party devices with uh, no properties. So this one, let's see, reverting back to my picture. First slave address is 1 and we're pulling register 100 and 101. So let's see, so we go to start address of 100, and we're going to do two registers, and the net ID is 1. OK, the second device we're going to connect, or create rather, is also going to be user defined. This one's going to be, let's see, what was it? Slave ID 2, register 200 and 201. 200 and 2. And we're going to change our net ID to 2. And we're going to click OK. Then we're going to create a third device. Also, user defined. Edit. Going back, slave ID 3, registers 100 and 101. 100 for two registers, and our net ID is 3. And our fourth device, we put that ahead of time. We could also like that. And let's see, it was registers 200 and 201. And it could be any addresses. This is just for this demo purpose, but different devices have different start addresses and different numbers of registers. You can also add different uh, additional registers, like if you had, say, the 100 registers and 200 registers for a specific device, you just add two different device connections. OK, now let's see. Let's just go to our toolbox, add some text, and let's just call it, let's see level, and we'll create another text field, and we'll call it set point, and call this oops, tank1, and we'll just Use the toolbox arrow. Okay. 
I want to select those three and just duplicate it. Do control V and do it down here. I'll just do two for this page since it doesn't look like it'll fit very well. But let's see, we need to make this change. So this is tank level two, or tank two rather. And then we can create some label widgets to just show the values. So we just create that, click away. Select our tag name, which in this case would be analog input one for device one. And let's see, then we'll create a second label widget. And we can align these after the fact, but I just want to show you quickly how to associate the tags. So that's for tank one. Then if we want to duplicate this, we can do control C, control V down here. Then we just click on these and we could change the tag name associated with that specific value. In this case it's this one and in this case it's this one right here. And we just duplicate this four times or however many tanks or devices we have. And this would be a sample of how you would communicate to those slave devices using this particular HMI work software to display the values on the touchpad. Now I'll show you a quick example using our Indusoft software. Let's see. Let me just go here to our graphics tab. So oops over here. Okay, so I just created a simple layout with four different tanks. Uh, each tank will have its own current level and set point. So from this, uh, let's see, we can add a background picture if we wanted to. Let's see, if we just make it a different color. Let's just do that. Let's make it a light blue. And then for this, uh, these are just text labels right here showing the current level and set point for each individual device. And we just create the tags for those. To create the tags, let's see, they're Modbus devices. So I've pre-created some of them. Let's see here. Oh, actually, it's over here. OK, so for instance, for device number one, or I'm sorry, device number one, this is a sample of what we need to do. So we create uh, two tags. First one's called tank level one, or tank one level. And the second one is tank one set point. And we just call it address one and address two. Uh, we create our header, which is 3x01, and our station ID of one, which is our Modbus ID for that specific device. Then we just duplicate this four times. And we just do that by going here and insert. And we'll get a device number two here. And we'll do 3x colon 0, uh, address 1. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. It's actually going to be address 100 and 101 and 200 and 201. So actually, oops. So here we could put 100 and 101. And here we're going to put 200 and 201. And we have to create our tags. So for this one, we're just going to create a new one, uh, tank2 underscore level. Yes, we want to create it. Yes, it's an integer in this case. So we'll just go with the defaults. And here we're going to call it tank two underscore set point. And yes, we want to create this. OK, now if we go back to our graphics, oops, I'm sorry, my screen over here, then all we need to do is add some graphics, there we go, a text box or a slider to show the value of the tag value. So for instance, right here I created a text label and I just select in integers, I have tank one level and I close this 
Now I can go here, unclick, click on graphics, text box, double click, select my tag, and this one was tank one set point. And I just can copy these two. Control C, Control V. Here, I just click away, double click, reassociate this with tank two level and tank two set point. Okay, and the only other thing I could show you or I could think of right now is to create a slider or we can use a slider to be used to adjust the set point. So we'll just use a standard library and we'll just pick this slider right here. Back here. Enter it here and we can set the minimum and maximum value that we want to put, but we also need to put the value that or the tag name. The tag name would be in this case set point for tank one. And there we have it. Then you just duplicate this and continue for the four different devices or however many devices you have. Um, let's see, that's all I have for you. But if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to show them anything on the TSH, on the Indusoft, or the touchpad program in HMI Works. But does anyone have any questions? Uh, the TSH is a Modbus sharing device, so it can allow two masters or multiple masters in this case to connect to the same device or same uh, Modbus slaves and you just connect them as if there's only one Modbus master but the benefit is you can connect multiple Modbus RTU slaves to a single set of Modbus RTU slave devices where normally you're only allowed one. Okay. If you have any questions just enter them into the chat box. Okay, so I guess if there's no questions, you can always email us your questions or give us a call. You can even talk to us on our web chat. Um, oh, okay, so Trey is asking, will this be available for download? Yes, we will be recording this session, and we will be posting it on our website. Um, after it's up on our website, I will email everyone in attendance here the link to view the video. Okay, thank you all for attending, and I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, and have a great weekend. And please feel free to email us and let us know any requests for future webinars or anything that you want to learn about or any devices you're interested in. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.